agriculture in focus today. The livestock subsector is set for some major redevelopments as the Ministry of Agriculture, Food Production, Fisheries and Rural Development looks to diversify St. Lucia's agriculture sector. I am Amanda Faye Clark and this is Agriculture in Focus. More on this as we continue our discussion with Sabina Belizer, the Poultry Coordinator of the Islands Agriculture Ministry, on her department's efforts to stimulate economic activities within the poultry industry. Good day and welcome. The livestock subsector is set for some major redevelopments as the Ministry of Agriculture, Food Production, Fisheries and Rural Development looks to diversify St. Lucia's agricultural sector. As we continue part two of Agriculture in Focus's Hengson Butcher discussion with Sabina Belazer on the ministry's efforts to stimulate economic activities within the livestock sector, we learn how important the poultry industry is to the overall aim of achieving one of the main objectives set out in our national agriculture policy, which is ensuring the island's food and nutrition security. Where are we at present in getting this feed mill operational? The most you can do is monitor the construction and renovations, whatever the setting up of the equipment and so forth, and hope that everything falls into place. That By that point, that is happening. We are doing the checks, doing the calls, doing the visits and, you know, ensuring that things are going on smoothly and seeing if there are any glitches. That has been done. Okay, so when the feed mill comes into operation... Mm-hmm. How can we ensure that the quality of the feed coming from that meal is um, on par with what, with what comes from? Okay, okay. Um, if when the um, feed meal operators, owners decided they want to set up operation in St. Lucia, of course, in Europe and in Martinique, these people are in operations right next door to us, okay? That a delegation from St. Lucia has visited their operations in Martinique and the quality of feed has been attested to. We also have informed them of what we require because our standards may be different to the European standards. They may be using, I'm not accusing, they may be using growth promoters and we don't use that over here at all. We have told them that is one thing we don't want in the feed. We have given them our protein content of the feed that we use for our sectors, that is the broiler and the table egg sector, the protein percentage content that we would want in the feed. They may be using lower or higher than us. The higher it is, the more costly it would be for you, of course. But what we use, we have given them our specifications. You do have the option of testing your feed with independent labs, and options are available to us um, in Martinique. Not their labs, but independent labs in Martinique that we have links to in Barbados, Trinidad, Jamaica, and the U.S. Independent labs which can do the feed quality testing for you. So we have already put plans in place for those that aspect of the feed quality testing. And we, we kind of want to make sure that the prize to the farmer mm-hmm. is... Yes. Another thing I should mention, I am not sure when, but it's supposed to come on stream in about the next two to three years that the government is building a multi-purpose lab for the agriculture sector. It would be to test... And the that lab would have the ability not just to test for the livestock sector, feed quality, meat quality, etc. for the livestock sector, but diagnostic work would also be done for the crop sector. So that lab would be of international standards so that not just the quality but the variety of tests being carried out there, we would be able to do our own feed quality testing and a lot of other tests that we would have had to send our samples outside of the region to get done. In terms of the quality of chicken that is produced locally, Mm -hmm. how do you compare that with chicken that we import? The chicken we import, first of all, if you want to look at the boxes the chicken comes in, there is a, a shelf life on the chicken product because we do inspections from our office as well, whatever comes in in terms of meat products. So we know it is not expired chicken. We know that for sure. But that chicken has been on ice. And on ice for how long? You have to think twice. You have to question, query. Boy, would I prefer that to a product which has been slaughtered within the last two days? It is on ice, but it has only been on ice for two days, two or three days. And, excuse me, the the local chicken in the freezers at the supermarkets go that quickly. Okay, because it's not like a whole vast amount 
of chicken compared to importing how many containers of chicken. The local chicken rotates that quickly on the market. Okay, so you are eating a fresher product if you want to call it that. Then there is also the, the fresh aspect, the fresh aspect of the slaughter. Where if you go in the chillers in the supermarket, you will see freshly chilled. These chickens are slaughtered every day. The orders are placed every day by the supermarket, and a, a percentage of the, the, the processing the number of birds processed goes to supplying fresh chilled. Okay, so you are getting a fresher product and as i pointed out we do not use any growth enhancers or growth promoters in our chicken that is another thing you have working for you our birds are grown under conditions which are natural for the chicken okay it, it they they're in a pen yes they're together in a pen but they're grown on the ground they are not in, in a cage isolated by themselves so they you have to take all of that into consideration for the better development of the chicken it's the same thing with a child you don't want to isolate a child in the development you will want that child to interact integrate there are natural conditions under which animals should be grown and which we in St. Lucia try to stick as much as possible to the natural growth pattern of animals when we are producing livestock table egg sector as well how satisfied are you with the contribution of the Broiler Producers Cooperative in the development of the poultry industry? Frankly speaking, the difficulties from what I can see happening around me, the difficulties that the Broiler Producers Association, the difficulties they are facing, is historical in the sense that there was an association, a, a cooperative before, um, that you may have known of, Staff Corp, which had a history where a lot of farmers lost money. And a lot of broiler and Staff Corp had broiler farmers, swine farmers, and table egg producers associated to it. And this story is a lot older than me. There were issues with Staff Corp where farmers lost a lot of money, and Staff Corp eventually fell through. So that farmers are now reluctant to become members of an organization and they do not f give it their full support so that the um, association is more or less on its knees begging the farmers to come together for their own good. There are the benefits of becoming a member of an organization such as that one far outweigh okay, the problems that they have had in the past because it's not that Staff Corp did not work, it worked. But outside of it working, there were difficulties and it fell through. But the benefits that could have been derived, that were derived from Staff Corp, would be the same and a lot more being in the modern age now, the modern days now. There's a lot of advancements which can happen now. Being a member of an organization such as that would be a lot more beneficial for farmers. You would have farmers addressing issues at the processing end, okay? It wouldn't be every individual farmer addressing the processor with whatever issues he is having. It would be a member of the organization taking on a, the collective responsibility. It would be not just addressing problems. It would enhance the development of the sector because, as I pointed out to them, it does not have to be just about addressing problems, looking for price increase, per pound of bird, looking for egg boxes. It doesn't just have to be about addressing problems. You can send your farming community out there to see what's happening out there as far as the poultry industry is concerned in Japan, in India, in China, in Africa. What can we take from there? You can send your members overseas to see that. You can put incentive programs in place to enhance the development of the industry. You would be providing employment because if you have like a hundred and something farmers, you must have a well-structured organization in place with an administrative secretariat to provide members with up-to-date information to, pro to organize the um, accounting section. So that would also provide employment for people who are non-producers. So an, having an organization such as that one 
is more beneficial to the farmers but farmers need to understand that and the fact that they have gotten some have gotten burned not all of them were there at the time some have gotten burned from the relationship with staff cop it is a major deterrent because these people are now telling the others who have never been involved in such a venture boy we, you know we had problems with staff cop and me i know putting my money in that and you putting your money in that i remember with staff cop and they always come back if i remember and i remember but you have to move on and you have to look at what would work in your best interest as I pointed out earlier, we are now facing a problem with the rising cost of feed. These people could lobby government, could lobby the financial institutions, could lobby international feed manufacturers to get a better deal on price feed for their farmers. There is advantage and a lot more. The advantages outweigh a lot more. There is always negative in everything we do. But look at the positive side of it and see what can work for you in being a member of that organization and become a member of that organization. Did you know that government provides duty-free incentives on farm machinery, inputs, irrigation systems, boat engines, boats, and many more? Investing in agriculture, a wise choice. Much thanks for staying with us on Agriculture in Focus. We bring you now part two of our discussion with Sabrina Belizer, the Poultry Coordinator of the Veterinary and Livestock Services Division, as she expounds on the Agriculture Ministry's efforts to augment production within our vital poultry industry. Are you satisfied with the quality of the products that we get from the poultry industry in St. Lucia? And if not, what can be done to improve it? Everything can always be improved. But generally speaking, and even above that, I am very much satisfied with the end product from the broiler industry. As I said, there are always issues which arise. Sometimes you get birds being slaughtered below weight. And that would be, for example, now we have had several incidences where the farmers have had to deplete their stocks below weight because of a lack of feed and the feed issues. Rarely that would happen. Okay, The feed shortage is not a, an occasional thing. That's a, that happens rarely. So that would happen rarely as well, that you would get birds being slaughtered below weight. And you would get a shortage in eggs, again, rarely. If you can tell me when was the last time you heard of an egg shortage in St. Lucia, I'm sure you don't remember when, how far back. So you get the rare occasions when things will happen for one reason or the other. But as far as the quality of the products are concerned, totally satisfied. They are up to international standards. I just wanted to make a statement to encourage people to support the local industry and why you think they should support it. When you buy your local chicken, you are providing employment for a lot of people, not just the farmer, as I pointed out, or the processor who has the plant, or the hatcher who has the, the hatching plant, or the feed supplier. These people have people working for them. Right now, government is looking for means and ways of providing employment. We need to remember, you do not buy clothes every day, you do not buy shoes every day, but you have to eat every day. Now, we do not only eat vegetables every day or biscuits and bread every day. You need your source of protein. If poultry is the cheapest source of protein, we need to ensure that we supply that protein to the population. Okay? So we're looking at increasing the amount we have on ground. And in, by increasing the amount we have on ground, we're increasing employment for people. And we are also keeping money here, which can be used for other purposes, such as the health sector, the education sector, to name a few. Poultry, the livestock industry on the whole, would employ persons, not one person. Even when it's high-tech, it has gone high-tech. You need people to man the equipment and the technology. So that is providing employment for people and revenue staying in the country to go into other sectors, which is important. Okay, there are people who want to come into St. Lucia to do business, okay, in the using, which would entail the use of chicken and eggs. And they do not want to support, I won't call names, but they do not want to support the local farmers. But when these people don't support the local, the local farmers, the revenue that they generate is generated from the local populace. I'm very passionate about that because you cannot want to come into St. Lucia to get involved in an industry which uses chicken or which uses eggs 
and we have the stuff here that you can get from here and you want to buy it from a, a foreign market or you want to buy it from the market in your country what about the money that the locals here buy your products with what are you giving back to our country it's not just a matter of providing some local employers with a job you can do a lot better than that okay so i am urging our people to support the local industry and when you go to buy your your chicken products your kentucky or your van turkey or your church's chicken or whatever other place which sells chicken find out if the chicken is purchased locally or you're going to buy your your ham and egg sandwich whatever it is find out if it is local eggs well as for the eggs i don't even have to say that i know we do not import eggs the eggs are produced locally so continue to support your local industry insist on eating local because you're providing work for people you are providing employment for people you have young people who are interested in agriculture but we cannot fit them in because we have so many limited agriculture ventures going on okay and these people are interested in producing food which is the number one thing you have to worry about and producing healthy food makes for less health problems in the country and increase revenue and increase employment in the country what measures are being taken at present by the Veterinary and Livestock Services Division to safeguard our local products, referring to eggs and chicken. We ensure that the farmers produce on the, the minimal, minimal, because as I pointed out earlier to you, everything is not perfect, but we ensure that the minimal health standards and production standards are in place. That is our job because you cannot produce below the standards below par. You have to ensure. And then if needs be, we do shut you down. You have to stick to a certain standard because the product has to come from as far as the health standpoint, the biosecurity standpoint, it has to, we have to ensure that because the public out there trust us to give them a healthy product. We cannot spoil our reputation. as We try as best as possible. As I said, it's not always perfect, but we try as best as possible to ensure that at least the minimum standards are in place. Ultimately, redeveloping this industry will prove beneficial not only to the success of the livestock sector, but will help sustain our agriculture as one which thrives on meeting the demands of our international market and most certainly catering to the growing needs of our domestic market. Ensuring our island's food and nutrition security is one of the many aims in establishing our economic independence. This has been Agriculture in Focus for today. I am Amanda Ficklock, thanking you so much for joining us.